This chicken with creamy mushroom sauce makes a pretty frequent appearance on my dinner table. And I think if you give it a try, it'll start making its appearance on your dinner table as well. Here's how I make it. But before I get started with the chicken, I'm going to get started with the rice. This is brown rice. This is my preferred rice, but obviously you can eat white rice or jasmine rice or whatever rice you like. Brown rice takes a little bit longer to cook, about 45 minutes. And I found that the directions on the back of the bag of most rice is just plain wrong. Usually most of the directions recommend double the amount of water versus rice, but I find to get better results if I do one and a half. So that'd be one cup rice, one and a half cups water. I just find that if you cook it with the uh, two to one ratio, like the instructions say, you get a wet, gummy rice, which I don't particularly like. So I put a little less water and it turns out a lot better. And for the three of us that will be eating dinner tonight, one cup of rice will be plenty. So I'm putting in one cup of brown rice and one and a half cups of water. I'm going to turn that burner on high just to start with. I'm going to let that uh, heat up with the lid off until I can start to see bubbles coming up like it's almost ready to boil. And when that happens, I'm going to turn the heat down to low and put the lid on. And then I'm not going to look at it again until it's time to eat. It can just sit like that. It takes about 45 minutes just like that and it'll be done perfectly. I do the same method for white rice. It just cooks in about 20 minutes instead of 45. Next up is the mushrooms. Uh, I just use whatever mushrooms that I happen to have on hand. I, I've tried this with a variety of mushrooms. Uh, today's mushrooms are just these white button mushrooms. And as you can see in the package, they've got a fair amount of dirt and other things on them. Uh, they're going to need to be washed. And I just give them a rinse in cold water, just rub those little particles off with my fingers. I don't really use a brush. We're going to be cooking this, so it doesn't need to be uh, perfectly, perfectly clean. If I was going to eat these raw on a salad, though, I would be uh, pretty meticulous about getting them really clean. And some people get rid of the whole stem. Uh, I don't mind a little bit of stem, but I just cut off the, the dry, hard end of it and leave uh, most of the stem there. There's good flavor in there. I'm going to slice these mushrooms up into pretty thick slices, probably, you know, a quarter to half inch, nothing precise. But the reason why is because when they start cooking later, they're really going to shrink and lose a lot of their moisture. And if you cut them too thin right now, basically they're just going to shrink into nothing. And I want to have some good sized pieces of mushroom uh, in my sauce at the end. And you can cut them in slices or you can uh, make them into little wedge shapes right here or cut them into triangles or star shapes or whatever you want. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Next is the broccoli. I, I kind of do the same thing with the stems on the broccoli. I like to eat uh, most of the stems too. I think they're good. I've seen a lot of people that uh, cut the broccoli off way high like that and just get the flowery part. And uh, I don't know. I think you're throwing away a lot of good broccoli there. There's a lot of good flavor and nutrition in the stem. I think it's just as good. But I'm going to cut this broccoli up into pretty large chunks. And the reason for the large chunks is I don't want it to cook too fast later on. You'll see what I'm talking about. And if you're not a fan of broccoli, I think frozen peas could be a good alternative in this dish. Uh, or green beans. I, I like green vegetables in this dish. But you can use carrots or squash or pretty much any vegetable you like. Go ahead and substitute it out for broccoli. Next up is the chicken. These are chicken breast tenderloins. These are the cut of white meat chicken that I'm uh, really into these days. Of course, you can use full-size chicken breasts or even chicken thighs if you like that better. Any chicken will work, really. So I'm going to put these chicken pieces into a pan with some canola oil. I've got the pan going on medium-high heat. And what I'm going to do here is just get some browning on both sides of the chicken. I'm not trying to cook the chicken all the way through here. I'm just getting some good color on both sides of the chicken. And that'll leave a little bit of color in the pan too. One of the reasons I like these tenderloins a lot is because they defrost really quickly and easily. They don't need to spend, uh, you know, a half an hour defrosting in the microwave or overnight. You know, they can just sit out for uh, an hour or two and they'll be defrosted or just 15 minutes in the microwave. So it's pretty handy. A little bit more expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. And once I've got some good color on both sides of that chicken, I'm going to pull it out of the pan and put it on a plate. And just cover that plate with some foil just to keep them warm. And before that fond in the pan starts to burn, I'm going to put in the mushrooms. Give those a stir around and get uh, those to pick up all that oil and all those uh, delicious brown uh, things from cooking the chicken there. And I'm going to turn the heat down to medium because I don't want these mushrooms to burn. And this will take a few minutes or so with the mushrooms, probably five minutes or so. I'm just going to stir them uh, uh, every minute or two. And uh, just to check, I want to just get a little browning on the mushrooms just like I did with the chicken. 
And after just a few minutes, the mushrooms have shrunk considerably and they're starting to darken in color, getting a little bit of browning around the outsides where they're touching the pan. And that is about perfect right there. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is some heavy whipping cream. This is a pint of cream, and uh, normally I just use a half a pint in this recipe, but this particular container is about ready to expire, so I'm going to use it all today, and this is going to be really saucy. Give that a little stir, and then to the mushroom and cream, I'm going to add some seasoning. Today I'm going to use this body of seasoning. This is just a general all-purpose seasoning. It uh, could probably be, be best described as just an all-purpose Italian-style seasoning. It's got a lot of garlic uh, and some Italian-style herbs in it. But I think any of the typical chicken seasonings would be good in here too. Rosemary, thyme, things like that, and of course salt and pepper, garlic and onion. And this seasoning has salt in it, but it doesn't have much pepper, so I'm going to add a little extra pepper. Give that a mix up. And I'm just going to wait a minute or two for this cream to come up to temperature and start bubbling. And when that happens, then I'm going to go ahead and add the chicken back in, making sure to get all those juices that have collected on the plate there, get those spread out in the pan in the cream. And then the broccoli goes right on top, get that spread around and get some of those um, thicker stalk ends kind of pushed down into the cream a little bit, because those will take a little bit longer to cook than the tops of the broccoli. The lid goes back on and what I'm doing here is just getting the chicken finished cooking and also the broccoli steamed and this will probably take oh four to five minutes or so and after about four or five minutes or so with the lid on uh, when the broccoli is starting to look like it's about 75 percent of where I want it to be I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off and leave it off and let this cream reduce down and I might turn up the heat a little bit at this point just to get it bubbling really good and get that cream reducing because I want that to reduce but I don't want the broccoli to get overcooked it's a bit of a timing thing here if you don't want to fool around with the timing of the broccoli and getting the sauce right you could just cook the broccoli separately in a different pot and just leave that out of the equation I've done that before. That works pretty good too. But I feel like I've got the timing down pretty good lately. So after another couple minutes, a lot of the water has evaporated from the cream. It's starting to thicken up. As you can see, it's sticking to the back of the spoon. It's a, starting to look like a nice, thick, creamy sauce. Time to get it off the burner. And I would pull this off the burner when it's slightly runnier than you think you want because it will thicken up even more as it cools a little bit. As soon as you pull it off that burner, it'll start to thicken even more. And this is best when served right away. I'm going to start off making a little bed of that perfectly cooked brown rice there on the plate. And then here comes our chicken and broccoli with mushroom sauce. And make sure to get plenty of mushrooms there and uh, also drizzle some sauce on top at the end. So that's my recipe for chicken with creamy mushroom sauce and broccoli and rice. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.